The future will be of our own making. In principle, present-day technologies of abstraction allow for informed production of viable futures. They make us aware of climate change. However, we fail to fully accept the implications of this realization. We begin by tracing three trajectories. First, we explore the ways humanity has shaped time and approach the concept of the future. In parallel, we look at the means people have adopted in order to manage chance and misfortune. And finally, we consider the development of technologies that allow for symbolic abstraction and modeling of physical processes. Over the course of time, these histories converged into two paradigmatic shifts. First, from a worldview shaped by prophecies to an existence structured by prediction. And second, from the paradigm of prediction to the one defined by the understanding that the future is artificially produced. However, we suggest that until now, the second shift hasn't been fully completed. Today's socio-economic systems still depend on the illusion of predictability, while at the same time, climate models teach us that the future can't be fully calculated. Insurance is one of the institutions illustrative of this impasse. It reproduces the future in ways that are essentially unsustainable. The transition within the insurance system needs to occur on three levels. First, capital protection. Insurance protects financial value irrespective of the destruction that certain profitable practices cause. Second, uninsurability. Insurance of destructive practices renders insurance itself gradually impossible. As climate change advances, risks become incalculable and certain losses inevitable. And third, collectivization of risk. Through compulsory insurance schemes, states provide basic services and support to populations. This security, however, is still individualized and far from universal. In principle, insurance is a medium of design. At present, it helps design what should not be designed, and it is fundamentally unsuited for the challenges we're facing. However, we still need institutional tools to produce the futures we wish for. We suggest that coupled with climate modeling, insurance could be the medium of deliberate futures design. For millennia, humanity was convinced that the future already exists. While many ancient intellectuals conceptualized the physical world or politics as cyclical in nature, seers, magicians or clerics looked for clues in the material world to support their prophecies. In Christianity, the future has been synonymous to the will of God, where faith is the means to accept fate and a prophecy is an intermediary between the believer and the realm of the divine. An attempt to prevent death, illness, material damage or other misfortune was long considered a blasphemy. However, humanity has always found ways to manage the fear of the future, be it by solidary mutual aid or marine trade agreements accounting for potential losses. What is required to consider potentiality, however, is abstraction of experience, time and physical world into science. First writing and numerical systems enable the virtual to be operationalized for a civilizational progress. It wasn't until the 17th century for symbolic systems to change the future. The invention of mathematical calculus and the articulation of probability theory marked the first paradigmatic shift of our interest. Leaving prophecies behind, humanity started to look at the world through the lens of prediction. Mathematical concepts gave rise to the invention of risk and its management through the technology of insurance. 
Disasters and misfortune could now be statistically enumerated and the losses compensated. Over the next three centuries, insurance matured both as a private enterprise and as a public institution collectivizing risks of industrial societies. These developments were aligned with scientific efforts to model physical processes. The astronomer and physicist Edmund Haley was interested in both these domains. He produced mortality tables used in life insurance, but also some of the first calculations of atmospheric circulations. Abstraction allows not only for temporal, but also spatial expansion. Insurance as an abstraction of risk and finance as an abstraction of value were closely linked to colonial expansion and trade. Representation of oceanic or atmospheric flows, on the other hand, led to the realization that the Earth's biophysical processes are mutually interconnected. The paradigm of prediction thus came together with the prospect of mastery of the future on global scale. Throughout the 20th century, the technologies of prediction spread across economic, military, and other institutional operations, soon amplified by early computation. What was once perceived as just an extension of human intelligence, however, proved to drive the second shift in the understanding of the future. Computer models reveal the fact that the future is not simply calculable, but artificially produced. Related to computer science, systems theory further emphasized the complexity of prediction mutating into production. Since the 1960s, projective models made it possible to understand the dynamic between socio-technical and ecological systems. In this way, modeling was deployed in the investigation titled The Limits to Growth. It revealed that the future is in fact a system and expose the physical boundaries of economic growth. The authors argued for balance to be re-established across Earth's and human-produced systems. However, many thinkers claim that this is in fact impossible, that the systems in question were too complex and the future was deeply uncertain. Some predicted that new hazards would continue to strike the world as boomerangs of modernization. Today, the idea of the future as a complex system doesn't require much advocacy. However, we still fail to deliberately produce the futures that would account for such complexity. And despite the efforts of economists or ecologists, we still haven't found a viable way to handle the proliferation of hazards, especially those related to climate change. More precisely, we still don't quite know how to effectively cope with the distinction between risk as a calculable likelihood of an event and uncertainty as virtual potential that resists quantification. It is apparent that the challenges of the future remain poorly governed. Global corporations and public institutions fail to approach risk and uncertainty as a condition that is universal, although with uneven consequences for different places and populations. Instead, insurance subjugates future perils to the logic of financial abstraction, thus prioritizing the resilience of the financial system over societies and ecosystems. What the industry aims for is to simply generate as much insured value as possible. We can also call it a dream of total insurability. To strengthen its capacity to insure losses resulting from climate-related events, the insurance industry deploys the so-called catastrophe modeling. These computer simulations enable insurers to enumerate the probability of disasters in specific locations. 
They tame uncertainty by randomized stochastic modeling, generating variations of short-term futures based on data about past disasters and cartographic information. Catastrophe models also estimate the magnitude of physical hazards, expected damage, and resulting monetary losses. Their main purpose is to help preserve existing financial capital. The development of the global climate models, on the other hand, has been motivated mainly by the scientific objective to understand planetary climate processes. These models segment the planet's atmosphere, oceans and land into a three-dimensional grid of cells and measure the exchange of matter and energy between them. The long-term projections they provide correspond to estimations of future greenhouse gas concentrations. Climate models make us understand that the probability of disasters is increasing and that slow processes of sea level rise or desertification are intensifying. In reality, however, neither climate or catastrophe models correspond to the actual scope of the Earth's metabolism. It spreads across about 14 orders of magnitude, from the microscopic to the planetary, and from milliseconds to millennia. Current climate models account for the scale of the planet and long-term time frames. However, they lack granularity on the micro level. Catastrophe models, by contrast, focus on isolated events and typically don't reach beyond the horizon of a year. Such design corresponds to the standard operation of the insurance industry. Its policies usually account for limited temporal and spatial scales, which in some cases obscures their actual implications. To date, we haven't been able to fully realize the potential of the paradigmatic shift brought about by advanced technologies of abstraction. Governments and industries have deployed computation to protect the status quo rather than deliberately produce viable futures. At the same time, climate models have taught us that the idea of total future-proofing is unattainable and that some losses are practically inevitable. What we are about to propose is not new. The industry still insists that insurance is a medium of prevention, but in reality it has long been a medium of design. It dictates features of products ensuring their safety. But more importantly, it enables business activity and infrastructural development from railroad construction to oil extraction. Such agency should not be suppressed, but amplified. The concept of future insurance, however, has to reach far beyond the constraints of the current financial system. It should enable iterative production of the future, shadowing slow processes of climate change. Starting from the shortcomings of current insurance, we outline how deeply it needs to change in response to climate modeling. So far, Insurance has been centered on the protection of private property and capital. Today, coal mining, industrial agriculture or sweatshops operation are all entitled to financial loss insurance as long as they are profitable. By contrast, we propose for the future insurance to shift from capital protection to value protection. For instance, Large-scale projects such as carbon sequestration may generate new risks rather than immediate profits. However, their long-term value may be priceless. Indeed, insurance should not prioritize financial value over material or social values. Its center of gravity should shift to dynamic functions of ecosystems and infrastructures such as coral reefs, energy grids, or even flocks of migratory birds. In general, insurance should pivot from compensation to automated guarantee of restoration and maintenance.
Insurance relies on calculability of likelihood as well as spatial and temporal delimitation of a risk. However, some climate-related perils, such as flooding, are practically certain. Other hazards, such as desertification or ocean acidification, can't be isolated either in time or space. Gradual impacts of these processes on coastal populations, agriculture or fishery are therefore uninsurable. These conditions lead us to approach insurance as management of insecurity. Such a strategy will need to account for the fact that vulnerability to uninsurable perils is unevenly distributed. In the case of flooding, wealthy populations will be able to escape and transform coastal areas into involuntary parks. Populations of small island states, on the other hand, won't have such opportunities. Thus, insurance shouldn't simply cover damage, but sustain just distribution of what can be preserved. In principle, insurance is a technology of risk collectivization. But compulsory insurance schemes such as car liability insurance or social insurance, typically treat collectives as groupings of accountable individuals. Moreover, collectivization is rather selective and usually limited to the unit of the state. Unstable climate, however, makes it apparent that risk is automated and universal. Therefore, it needs to be approached as a planetary commons. Universal food security, for example, requires coordinated action linking individual producers with large-scale infrastructures. To strengthen diversified and technologically enhanced land use, insurance has to couple with multi-scalar sensing and modeling technologies. It needs to be highly adaptive and provide specific, timely support. Localized uncertainty, however, must be shared on the basis of planetary mutualism, governed through a transnational coalition of political and scientific bodies. Some centuries ago, the management of chance and misfortune converged with new mathematical tools and formed the technology of insurance marking a shift from the paradigm of prophecies to the one of prediction. Today, we need to ensure that advanced technologies of abstraction, such as climate modeling, effectively inform our strategies of futures production. The insurance industry has long supported practices contributing to anthropogenic climate change, thus limiting the possibility of successful climate mitigation. Coupled with climate modeling, the concept of insurance would change radically, deeply affecting both finance and governance. Its potential as a design medium could then be mobilized to make projections of the future direct its continuous iterative realization. <laughs>